Hi guys, in this video we're going to be looking at binding energy, mass defect, atomic mass unit, and then we're going to finish with a summary. In this video we're going to learn about a type of energy called the binding energy. We already know that nucleons within a nucleus are held together by the strong nuclear force. The strong nuclear force acts to keep the nucleus together. If there was no strong nuclear force, the nucleus would fly apart due to the repulsive force between positively charged protons. In order to remove a nucleon from the nucleus, we must do work against the strong nuclear force. The strong nuclear force will act to pull the nucleon back towards the nucleus. So in order to separate this proton from the nucleus, work must be done against the strong nuclear force. And because of this work done, energy is required to separate a nucleus into its constituent neutrons and protons. We call this the binding energy. So to separate the nucleus out into all its different nucleons, the energy needed is called the binding energy. The binding energy of a nucleus is the energy required to separate the nucleus into its constituent protons and neutrons. Equivalently, we can say that it is the energy that will be given out when the individual nucleons come together to form a nucleus. So if we have a certain number of protons and neutrons, and we bring them all together to form a nucleus, the energy given out in this process is equal to the binding energy. Now let's define the mass defect of a nucleus. Energy is given out when nucleons come together to form a nucleus. So protons and neutrons can form a nucleus and also energy will be given out. Using the mass energy equation, we therefore know that a decrease in the energy of the nucleus means a decrease in its mass. So from our equation stating that energy E is equal to mass M times the speed of light squared, a decrease in energy means a decrease in mass. As a result, the mass of the nucleus is less than the total mass of the separated nucleons. So if we found the mass of the nucleus and compared it to the total mass of the nucleons that make it up, we would find that the mass of the nucleus is less than the total mass of the nucleons. The difference between the total mass of the separate nucleons and the mass of the nucleus is known as the mass defect. The mass defect delta m is equal to the total mass of the nucleons minus the mass of the nucleus. We can find the number of neutrons in a nucleus given its nucleon number and proton number. Remember the notation we use has nucleon number at the top and proton number at the bottom. And the number of neutrons is equal to A minus Z. Using the number of protons and neutrons and their corresponding masses, we can find the total mass of the nucleons. The total mass is equal to the proton number Z times the mass of a proton plus the number of neutrons which is A minus Z times the mass of a neutron. The mass of the nucleus is subtracted from this sum to calculate the mass defect. So we can write out our formula for the mass defect as delta M equals Z times the mass of a proton plus A minus Z times the mass of a neutron which makes up the total mass of the nucleons making up the nucleus, minus the mass of the nucleus. We can use the mass defect and the mass energy equation to find the energy released when a nucleus is formed from its nucleons. This is equal to its binding energy. So the mass energy equation allows us to find the binding energy. It's equal to the mass defect times the speed of light squared. Now we're going to find something called the atomic mass unit. An alternative way of measuring the mass of atoms, nuclei or nucleons is by using the atomic mass unit U. So when we look at a nucleon, we sometimes want to measure its mass in atomic mass units U. The atomic mass unit gives a measure of the mass relative to the mass of carbon-12. 
An atomic mass unit is defined as 1 12th of the mass of an atom of carbon 12. So this means that in atomic mass units, an atom of carbon 12 has mass 12u. So if we were to look at the mass of a carbon 12 atom, we would find that it would be equal to 12u in atomic mass units. We assume the mass of a nucleus of carbon-12 to be approximately 12u, since the mass of the electrons are negligible. So obviously if we found the mass of a whole carbon-12 atom, we should include the mass of the electrons. But because the electron mass is so small, we take it to be negligible. And therefore we can say that the mass of a carbon-12 atom is approximately the same as the mass of a carbon-12 nucleus. We can find the equivalent of one atomic mass unit in standard units, or kilograms. One atomic mass unit is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. We can use this to convert between atomic mass units and kilograms. So to get from atomic mass units to kilograms, we need to multiply by 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27. And to get from kilograms to atomic mass units, we need to divide by 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27. Let's do an example of calculating the binding energy of a carbon-14 nucleus. And we have some helpful masses of particular particles in atomic units given. Our first step is to write down the mass energy equation to be used to find the binding energy. This equation states that binding energy E is equal to delta M times C squared. Now we write down the formula for mass defect. Mass defect delta M is equal to Z times the mass of a proton plus A minus Z times the mass of a neutron minus the mass of the nucleus. Step three is to write down the proton and nucleon number of carbon-14. The proton number of carbon-14 is six and the nucleon number is 14. Now we need to substitute in values to calculate the mass defect of a carbon-12 nucleus. So we have delta M is equal to Z, which is 6, times the mass of a proton. We're given the mass of a proton as being 1.00728 atomic mass units. And we have to add 14 minus 6, which is the number of neutrons, and multiply it by the mass of a neutron which we're given in the question is 1.00867. And now we subtract the mass of a nucleus, which we're given as 14.00324 atomic mass units. And this gives us delta M equals 0 0.1098 atomic mass units. Step five is to remember the equivalent of one atomic mass unit in kilograms. We know that one atomic mass unit is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And now we're able to find the mass defect in kilograms. We have to multiply our value in atomic mass units by 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27, which gives us a value for the mass defect of 1.82268 times 10 to the minus 28 kilograms. The final step is to calculate the binding energy. So we substitute our mass defect into the equation in order to calculate the binding energy. We have to multiply by the speed of light squared. And we get that the binding energy is equal to 1.65 times 10 to the minus 11 joules to three significant figures. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap or bye smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.